We're going to continue our discussion of sequence models by extending the model that we talked about before, the recurrent neural network, by allowing it to forget. And so the great thing about a recurrent neural network is that it remembers everything. It can have these very long-range dependencies that can capture uh, the entire sequence. But that's also a downside. And so what we're going to talk about today is a model called the LSTM, the Long-Term Short-Term Memory Model, that allows the model to selectively choose what it remembers and what it forgets, thus emphasizing the parts of the sequence that can help it do the best. So before, when I showed you pictures of the RNN, we had a very specific uh, representation that I borrowed from Rikang Sokha that uh, showed you the actual vectors and all of that. We're now going to take a more cartoony approach for representing these models that show the vectors as circles, and we're, we're going to ignore uh, the actual numbers of dimensions for the moment. So in the recurrent network, you have your input at the current time step. It takes the previous hidden state as input, combines it with your current input vector, passes it through some nonlinearity, and produces a new hidden state that goes to something that you can use for, say, making a prediction, and goes into the next time step. So this is what we talked about last time, now in a more cartoony form. And the inside of these boxes are going to get more complicated, but we're going to use the same representation to transform the recurrent neural network into the LSTM. The LSTM works on the same principle as the RNN, but it has more components on the inside. So let's take a look at how the LSTM model handles its memory over time. So all of this is built on the idea of gates. So gates either let information through or stops the information from going through, and this depends on the input that it's getting. So let's see how this works. A gate takes its vector input and then multiplies. A zero means forget everything. A one means carry through unchanged. The LSTM uses three different gates to handle its input and output over time. You can think about this as a train moving through a rail yard that gets shunted in various directions. And so one way that you can pass through an LSTM is to just take the previous memory unchanged. And so your previous time step represents the state OK. Maybe your current word is like a filler word, um, or something like that that does nothing to change the meaning of the sentence. And so you just copy over your previous hidden state unchanged. And so this is how it can have a long-term memory, like the RNN. It decides whether to remember the previous state based on a function of the previous hidden state and the current word that you're seeing. So, for example, if your word is something like um, uh, then you might just carry through your memory completely unchanged. And this decision may also depend on the hidden state. Maybe if you can detect that you're remembering something in the hidden state, like a name in our previous example, that's something that you need to remember, so you don't want to forget that just yet. And then, of course, there's a bias term, as usual with these sorts of models. The other decision that you need to make is how much are you going to contribute to your representation from the current time step. And this is, again, a function of both the hidden state and your current input, plus some bias, and then, as usual, that gets passed through a nonlinearity. And so there are two components to this. One is the strength, so how much is it going to contribute, and then you also have what are you going to contribute. And so now you have something very much like the RNN. You have this interpolation between the current state and the previous state. And so the F says how much your previous state is going to contribute. 
Your I says how much your current contribution is going to contribute to the new hidden state representation. And from that, you can have an output in each time step. And here, in an abuse of notation from what we talked about with the recurrent neural networks, we're going to represent the hidden state as CT and our output as HT. So that's the basic process of how you go from a sequence to outputs in an LSTM. So it's very much like an RNN, but with more complicated innards, where you effectively decide how much you're going to carry over from the previous time step and how much you're going to use in the current time step. So there are a lot of changes in the LSTM. We have a lot of new parameters, and you might be wondering how many of those are actually important. And so that's what we're going to talk about next. And so the LSTM is a historically very important model introduced by Spidhuber and Hochheiter, and it really changed the way that a lot of people work with neural networks and led to state-of-the-art advances on many tasks. But there are many components to this LSTM, and we need to figure out which of them are important as we apply them to tasks that we care about.